Right, I'm putting an Apex one on next then. At least we've had a practice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a cloudy day here in Lincolnshire. This is my mum's Hyundai i10 and it needs a new timing chain. We'll have a chat with dad in just a minute to find out why. In this video, we're gonna replace one. We're gonna see how easy it is to replace the timing chain and the Hyundai i10. For me, this is the first time I've seen anything like this done, so it's gonna be interesting. Stick around with it then. New timing chain coming to the Hyundai i10. You're turning it to silent, are you? Just blocking my stockbroker. Right then. Hello, good day. How are you doing? Now How's then, mate. You all right? Looking good, thank you. Uh, it's a bit cold and windy here in it's Lincoln. It's not so bad here. in the shed, is it? We are with Mum's Hyundai i10. Yes. We are going to replace the timing chain. Yes. The question I have for you, first and foremost, is why? Well, it's making an horrible little shush, 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 shush noise. All right, okay. Let's have a look. And the Hyundai here. forums are not very forthcoming. So this is the K1 litre series we'll engine. It up. And it's making a noise, and one would think it is a blinking belt. Okay. So let's have a listen. But you take the belt off, and it still does it. So I can hear a chunk, 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 chunk. Yeah, it's got worse actually. When you first could hear it, you just, you just sworn that was a belt. So that noise. Now it does sound mechanical. So that noise that we can hear. You can't hear it through there. We think is the timing chain. I hope it is. I've been to see a Hyundai master technician and he rubbed his chin and says, I don't know. Right. But probably ain't been doing it for a long while. But according to the reception lady, she says, oh, they rattle like mad when they've gone. Well, it's not rattling like mad. It's making a noise. But it is making a noise. So you've done some diagnostics and you've taken a belt off. I've took the belt, the auxiliary drive belt off and it still does and it. And it still does it, which tells us that it's probably something in the engine. Um, okay, so... so we're going to replace the timing belt. Yeah, worst case scenario is though it's the variable valve timing things, but I don't think it is. What we're going to do by replacing the chain, can it make it worse? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're not running the risk of breaking mum's car. Um, how uh, many miles has the car done? 70 odd, isn't it? 70 odd thousand. thousand. It's got worse since we've owned it. And it's a 15 plate car, so it's nearly 10 years old. Would you expect that to be an acceptable level of replacing the timing chain on a car? 70,000 miles? In my day, mate, they used to last the longer for the car. Yes, yes, indeed. So you've bought a kit. Yes. Let's go have a look at the kit. So you've bought a Napa yeah, timing chain there's two chain sorts. Kit. There's either an Apex one or a Napa. Yep. The Napa was a bit dearer. We've had Napa stuff before and it's yep. all right, isn't it? Okay, so how much was this kit? 80 odd quid. 80 odd pounds. Yeah. And in the kit you get a chain, of yep. course. I've got marked links, look, for you know to time it up. Lovely. What's this? There's the guides. Yep. Okay. Chain. And what's in the box? Grease? Tensioner. Oh, a tensioner. You can get a kit with the top pulleys on, but they're not actually just pulleys, they're uh, variable valve timing things. Okay. What that, else that have you That brings bought? the price up to 250 quid, that's 80 odd quid. Blimey. What else have you bought? Oil, fully what? synthetic. Let's have a look. Oh, 5W40 manual. A3B4. Uh, from eBay? Yes. Car parts for less? Carousel car parts. Carousel car parts. Yeah, they, they trade, I found three different names for the same firm under eBay. Yeah, well, why wouldn't you? And also, then I suddenly thought, Christ, they're getting some bad feedback now. Oh, are they? Yeah, which shocked me. It does shock had, me. Because we've been using them, haven't we? Carousel car two parts. Two of the direct, so then you go on company's house and two of the directors are not directors anymore and another person's a director. Oh, sold. And then you see, that they've had a charge put on them, so basically someone has loaned them some money. Ah, okay, fair That's enough. The, the latest thing that happened is they've been loaned some money, so probably selling stuff so cheap comes <laughs> at a price. Uh, they were an absolute bargain. Yeah, absolutely. So how much was that? Like oh, 10 I bought quid? two bottles for 35 quid. Yeah, Bar bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, bonkers. One bottle at Euros is that. Yeah, and what else have you bought? You've bought some, is it HT Leeds you've got there? No, no. What's, this? what's this? Durko. Oh, Durko, right, so that's your... your um, hang on a minute now, I'm going to get it right. 
anaerobic sealant. No, it's not, is it? It's high, high temperature silicon, isn't it? <laughs> So I tell you, this is the stuff we use on the Audis and that. Ah, right? not, not the stuff we use on Rover 75s. No. And a man oil filter. We're going to do the oil filter yeah, change I, as well. So I paid twice as much for the oil filter yep. than what you would do. Okay, fine. Mum is telling us that it's cup of tea time. It is. We'll have a cup of tea and uh, then we'll start then. So first port of call is going to be stripping it down and getting to it. What yeah. I'll do before we get there, I'm going to let you explain the process. I don't know, I've never done one before. And then we'll, um, well, you're not going in blind. Surely you've got some instructions. No, I shall keep my eyes open. <laughs> Surely you've got some instructions, though. We'll have well, a... I have. I've got a little record. I've bought a record with the instructions mm. on. Well, we'll, we'll not, have a chat about it's not that. not ever so good. In uh, just a minute. We'll have tea first. Tea up. Right, cup of tea over. That was good. Good cup of tea. Um, let's talk about the process yes, then, of replacing a timing chain. Um, I'm guessing you've done many timing chains in your uh, actual career, oh. but um, how do you know what to do? Um, you got a Haynes manual or what? No, I bought one of them records off the internet. A CD or? Yes. Uh, so the CD has arrived. Yes. What has the CD set us back? £5.50 plus the delivery, so it's £6.50. Okay, and what have you learnt from the from the disc? Well, it's not ever so good, really, but it's got the basic details. I've got my torque wrench settings, shows me the timing marks, which I'd already worked out from watching some... <laughs> it was an Indian gentleman on the old uh, YouTubes. Uh, so you've already watched a YouTube video on yeah. how to do it. Well, we might as well stop making this now. Uh, just talk us through it quickly, then. What's the process? How do we do it? <laughs> Air filter off. Rocker cover off, alternator chucked forward, air conditioning compressor chucked forward, pulleys off. It says you take the water pump off. Okay, we haven't got a new water pump. No, I'm going to put it back on. Okay. Uh, disconnect the battery first, uh, wheel off, under tray off, engine mounting off, support the engine, and take that front pulley off, take the cover off, and see what we've got. What do you estimate that to be, time-wise, if we were doing it in a real-world scenario I the and foggiest not talking about on YouTube? I don't know, really. Okay. I don't blinking well now, but we'll soon find out. <laughs> so part one, then, is going to be the starting to strip it down. Let's go. I'll tell you what, do you know what I'm going to do? Hello. I'm going to time us. Oh. So it is now, let's have a look, it's now... 10 to 5 on a Sunday we... evening, so we won't get it all done tonight. We're not going to get a lot done. But it's uh, 10 to 5 on a Sunday evening, so we'll start the process now. So first port of call then, yeah. air filter needs to come off. Yeah, film One, it all so I know what I'm, how to put it back together. <laughs> off comes the battery. Do, do, do. Oh, what's round the back? It's on a grommet, grommet, yeah. Out it comes. Now we can see, yeah, as you say, the rabbit, the top of the engine. Uh, all them injectors. Bits to take off. Yes, there's a lot of stuff in there, yeah, actually. Isn't that's there? a bit in the way, isn't there? That's quite annoying. We're going to make a noise in a minute, so you better stop filming. We're going to blow that muck off with the airliner. What's the plan? We're blowing all this dust and dirt yeah. off. So we don't get it in the engine. In the engine? So we've blown all that off, now it's time to take some bits yeah, off. What's going on here? Oh dear. Oh. It's tight, wasn't it? That was a power pose. Just Out come the uh, the plug top coils, and you're putting the screws I am, yeah. back in the holes. Why are you doing that? So, I'm not stood scratching my head where it all goes when I'm putting it back together. Next port of call is remove these connectors. This one's got a little tag on, so it needs a little pick to carefully remove that. What is it you've just taken off there? Wires to the variable valve timing solenoid. You mentioned earlier that if it's not the timing chain, it could be something to do with the VVC. What, what is that? I hope it's nothing to do with the variable valve timing gears. I don't know yet. I don't jolly well know. We could be wasting our time. So, a few people uh, on, on the internet yes. have commented saying, John, why are you um, doing a timing chain replacement on a car that's only done 70,000 miles? Yeah. Um, there's a couple of people who have said that, you know, these will go over 100,000 miles. Yeah. 
We're not 100% certain it's the timing chain that's causing us the little tick, 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 tick. It's coming from that neck of the woods, and if you take the belt off, it's gone. So. It is. But also, we don't know the history of the car, do we? It, it could have been neglected from an oil change perspective. Um, and why would a, an oil change neglection damage that timing chain? Timing chains, modern timing chains, are a bit quaint about uh, oil changes. So we don't know the history of the car. We haven't got a major service history with it. It's been through main dealers most of its life, but yeah. that, that doesn't mean anything nowadays, sadly. And I understand from what I've looked on forums, there is a known fault with funny little noises from under one litre timing chains. Well, there we go. But it's very vague, and it's the same thing with a Kia. It appears Kias have a similar problem. And it's the same, it's not detrimental to the vehicle. But this is definitely whatever it's doing is getting worse. And I've had a poke through the top and it doesn't look as though it's stretched. You just said something really interesting there in that you actually don't know what you're doing, i.e. you've never done uh, any work on a Hyundai i10 before. No. Are the engines very similar to things you've worked on in the past? It's not so much that. When you're familiar with something, you know exactly which bits to be taking off. Yes. And you know how they come off. And you're not that familiar. No. Sorry. But it's not, you've not looked at it and thought, oh Christ, I've got no idea what I'm doing yet. Engines is engines, aren't they? Engines is engines. So the rocker cover needs to come off now. That's the next port call. The workshop manual says the engine does not have to be removed to do this. No, because it's quite a small space in there. Yeah. That's what the workshop manual said. Well, thankfully, no, we're not taking the engine out then. No. Although that would give me an excuse to use my engine crane that we've never used. Have you bought a new gasket for the no, rocker cover? I have not. They're six million pounds. <laughs> They're that expensive, are no, they? I want to see if I can get away with it. If not, I'll just have to buy one. Go buy one, can't I? Not on there. In theory, that should now be free. No, because there's more bolts in the middle. Aha! Don't forget the bolts in the middle. Here it comes. Sounds better, doesn't it? Now she's off. Oh. Engine. The gasket has stayed there, and it can jolly well stay there for now. So the gasket's what stayed on the block, has it? Head. Oh, yeah, head on the head. Yes, and it can stay there. Wow, that's a beautiful engine. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Engines are us. See, that's not loose. My concern is these things making a noise. So just while we, now we've got that cover off, let's have a look at everything. These are obviously your cams. Interestingly, it says Kia on the cam. Can you see? It does, doesn't it? Uh, we've obviously got, what are these, the valves? Or the bores? Plugs. Plugs. Camshaft. Camshaft, yeah. There's the cam followers. Yep. And the valves are underneath. Yeah. And these are the variable valve timing things. So how do these work then? What do these Solid do? They change the valve timing for different engine revs. Right. And that chain obviously sits on those sprockets. My concern is it's these that's making the noise. Okay. Why uh, would they make a noise? I don't know. Because on a Renault, they go... <laughs> When you first start them up, if they're faulty, they're controlled by these solenoid valves. Which changes the valve timing according to revs. What's this sticking out here? Just don't know. <laughs> I did notice it. It's some sort of spring some thing. Some sort of spring-loaded pin. See, that could be something like that. The worst case scenario is we don't fix it, but it's not as though we're spending all of our life doing it, is it? No. Just a day or two. Right, well... So now we're going to see... Going Show to, me that engine. I'm going to jack it up now. And I'm going to take that wheel off. If we're wasting our time, we're wasting our time. What are you filming me for? Because what, what am I filming you for? Yeah. Because uh, I've had a good look at this beautiful engine, and it is beautiful. But um, I want to know why you're taking the wheel off now. Is it so you can manually set the, uh, the engine... I'm going to take it to Timing. bits from under there. Oh, are you? That's really what I'm going to be doing, Gromit. 
that's what I'm hoping to do anyway. I'm in love with the engine. I think it's beautiful. I'm in love with your engine. Hey, look at my engine. <laughs> Flipping heck, you're trying to tip that over. Engine. Axle stands in place, of course, because safety. Next port of call, take the wheel off. What's the next port of call? Wheel off, under tray off, crank pulley off, and then, well, not loosen the crank pulley nut, to be fair. Look after your wheel trims, boys and girls. Yeah, stick it back on my wheel, Gromit, please. Rapids? Yeah. That's what was on it when you bought it. Those are shiny nuts. Oh. Shiny, shiny nuts. 10 mil, 10 mil. Bonus interior content. Bonus Molinos. Off comes the under tray. Yeah, it's slightly like a side one, isn't it? Right, so actually, uh, that was a dirty light. It wasn't an under tray, it was this sort of side tray. And now we've taken that off. Amateurish in the flipping extreme. What? what? <laughs> we can see these pulleys, which we need to uh, loosen. WTF. So why do you need to loosen that nut? I've got to take that pulley off, mate. And why do you need to take the pulley off? Because the pulley is stopping me getting that cover off. In fact, the correct term is a panel side cover right hand. And it doesn't say Kia on it. I know you're concentrating, but what I is am. that special tool that you've put on the end there? To hold this thing. So this could come off. This it's could a stretch bolt. cause a problem. It's a stretch bolt, so it'll be fairly tight. I don't think it'll be that much of a problem. So that needed two of us to do that job. Um, basically, we used this tool that you've made yeah, just to, uh, to hold it in place, the, the wheel in place. Fits in that slot. Fits then. in the slots like that. And uh, we've cracked that nut off now. Good. So now that should come off. No, I'm not taking it off yet. Just wanted to get it loose. So that's half the battle. Right, what's next? So we've cracked that nut off. What's next? To slacken the bolts off here. This is on the alternator, right? Yeah, I'm just going back and just slowly taking bits off. Let's have a ratchet on the job. I'm going to whip that uh, pulley off. We don't take it to bits until we've timed it up. But we're still working on moving stuff at the minute. Here's a quick Lincolnshire interlude to see what is growing at the back of the house. Uh, it's cabbages this year. I've just been looking at the produce growing at the back of the house. Ah, uh, good man. What are you doing? Ah. Taking photographs. Yes, I know where to put that belt on. Oh, I'm disappointed that you've used your mobile phone to take a picture. I know, I'm embracing technology. And, uh, Top tip. Not a piece of cardboard. I'm hanging that on there the same way as it fits on the car, so I'll put it back the same. Does it matter? I don't know. So, so what, you've hung the belt on the direction that it came off. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Whether it matters or not, I don't know. Top tip. I shouldn't think it matters in the slightest, but... Uh... So not a top tip then? I've done it anyway. Now nail what... your colours to the mast, is it a top tip or not? Yeah. Top tip? Yeah, it's used to running that way, leave it and put it back that way. What's next? You've taken that belt off? Yes, and I'm going to take the altering nator off. Well, I'm not going to take it off, I'm going to... Tip it forward? Well, the brackets have got to come off because the brackets fit to the... front cover. Ah, so there it goes, look. No, it's got to come off at the bottom as well, look. Because that bit you can see it's fastened to is the front cover. So then but what you're saying is you don't want to take the alternator all the way off. No, not, not if I ain't got to. Save time. For those of you following the time check, this uh, project, we're about 45 minutes in now. And we've got the wheel off, we've got that belt off, we've got the uh, rocker cover off. Now we're getting the alternator off. Right, the alternator is. Why have I got to take the water pump? Unscrewed. Off. It must go in that front cover. So. So hang on a minute. You, you've just talked to me about a YouTube video you've watched, mm. in which the chap 
I don't know, took the air. He was an Indian gentleman, so I couldn't understand what he was doing, but he'd got an air compressor conditioning tool. It must have been a different engine. So he was taking the gas out of the air con? Yeah. We, surely we'd have to do that. Well, look, I couldn't do the job if I did, could I? No. So there's no need. No, OK. So we're not going to be touching the air con compressor? It doesn't look like it. I thought maybe I might have to chuck it to one side, but nope. Good news. It's got to come off because it's sort of... So we're looking at the water pump well, here. The instructions, sorry, it's got to tell me about It needs come to off. come off. Does it need to come off? Well. Yeah, it's attached to the case, look. This pulley needs to come off. Yeah, it can't come off yet. We need my timing marks. That'll be one of the last things I take off before I take the pulley off. It's a tiny sump, isn't it? Yes. I thought you were going to say it's a tidy sump. Come out the road. Tidy sump. I'm trying to think of a reason to use the Lidl inspection camera that we've bought. Some people have said if you hold down the camera button, oh dear, it films video. Um, oh, that's good then. So we, we've got some more stuff to do. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that's watched that video, by the yeah, way. It's on the channel. People have got them then. And so time to take some coolant out of it. Oh. Oh. What you found? I found that. Ooh. Yeah, that's going to make a mess. Yeah. Is there a tap on it? Yeah, there's a tap, but... Is it going to go straight onto the bumper? Yeah. Do you need a hose? What you need? No. What have you taken off? Taking this bit of plastic off. Ah, there's the piece of plastic. It's like a plastic splitter under tray, isn't it? Yeah, I'm taking the bugger off. Alan Milliard's got a new video out this weekend. I hope you've all watched it. All right, yeah. Thanks, thanks for plugging somebody else's channel and not ours. Ralphie Customs. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not bothered about a bit of swearing, watch Ralphie Customs. What's Hub not got out this week? I've not seen any Hub nutting. I apologise. I think he's been on holiday. Well, lucky beggar. I think we need to point out to the good people that actually it's bank holiday when we're doing this. This is how we're spending our bank it's not holiday. Bank holiday. It is, it's bank holiday weekend. Oh well. Out comes the water. That's a Lincolnshire phrase. You're gonna get kicked if you lay in my road. Because I'm a bit clunch. You what? I'm a bit clunch. Clunch? I'll tell you what you can do. If you stand up, could you take the radiator cap off, please? Yes. Apprentice of the week. Top banana. Yeah. Take that plastic bit off, else it's going to whittle all over. Have you got the cap off? It's not off, it's just open. Do grommet. Coolant ASMR. Sure, people are interested in seeing some coolant whittling out. How what? are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. I'm waiting for it to stop whittling. Yeah, I've just spotted something. Yes, mate. I want to address it. Address it? Yeah, yeah. turn that over because that address is your address. Address the nation. Uh, the oil we've got is 5W40. Yeah, is, what is it? Is it uh, and A3 specification? It, it is, yeah, it's ACEA A3. Right, that's a good According start. According to the people on the internet, however, you need, or should be using, listed for them, 5W30 fully synthetic. Oh, crikey. Well, uh, ever, since, ever since global warming, they say, they say you should use more <laughs> thicker oil for running. I well, suppose the important We'll get the proper stuff from... Uh, is the 5W... Yeah, I think we should be putting 5W30 We'll get some proper in. stuff tomorrow. Yeah, well, I've got a big vat of 5W30, but... Um, we'll so do for those that, of you that have... No. So those eagle-eyed uh, people that have Thank spotted you. it at the beginning... Um, We've got the wrong oil, so we're going to use the right oil. It's that five bit that's important, to be honest, in my humble opinion. And don't put crap speck oil in. So it's time to time the uh, the engine up. Um, I think that's the way it goes. We've put a mark on the variable valve timing here, variable valve timing, and we need to. It's going to come and mark, line up with another one. Is that right? How's how much? Yeah, there should be another one come up from here. Right. And they'll line up together. So when they line up, I'll shout at you. Should be coming up now. It's not up yet. I don't see my marks yet. Uh, wonder where my mark is on here. 
It's not there yet, did it? Not yet. So I've got a mark on the right hand side one, which is now at the top. Yep. Yeah. But the mark that you've shown me is sort of now at six o'clock. The right. one here, mark here. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other one's gone. Bums. What's that mean? I don't know yet. I think I might have to go look at the book. Right, hang on a minute. What's what have we done now then? So we've taken that pulley wheel off. <laughs> because did you realise you was talking rot or? No, yeah. So there's a mark on this wheel. No, I just I just asked my colleague to look if there's any marks coming up anyway. You couldn't see it very clearly, so that's so I can see it, so I know roughly where I am. Lovely. So we've put a mark on the uh, on the wheel. I said to go to the workshop manual. That's why we've got a workshop manual. It's not 100%, but now the marks are slowly coming together. We'll get it uh, aligned. You can see them there. Yeah. Right, so we've got them marks in the right place, yeah. and that obviously means the engine is timed. We're somewhere near enough now. For people that don't understand the importance of why those marks, why we've just done what we've done, what is it that we've done? Just tell us. We've put it on TDC number one. So then when we put it together, the marked links on the chain, which I showed you earlier, yep. will be on there. So the engine is top dead centre, or well, the piston is top dead centre. Yeah. Uh, Not like your rover, you do at a safe point, you do these at the top. We're all right. We're all right. Just Out comes the special tool. We don't want that to move if we can help it now, any more than we're forced. Oh, that's it. Now move. comes the pulley. That's what we've got that loose now. We can take the pulley off. We'll soon find out anyway. It's not as though we're... Here it comes. Show us your pulley. Oh, nice. Crankshaft pulley. Crankshaft pulley. It's made in two pieces, look. It's got rubber in the middle. Oh. Harmonic balancing or something. It's oh, right, on. okay. Harmony. All I know is it's not on the car anymore. I spy a water pump that is in the way. It's coming off. It's not the water pump coming off. Oh, you're taking a sensor off. What's that? Speed and position. TDC sensor, whatever you want to call it. Off comes the water pump. There's another bracket got to come off here by the look of it. The water can be running out of it. Hey. Hello. There's a question I've got here, which is what the people on the internet are going to ask, so I'm asking it right now. Why are we not replacing the water pump while we're here? I don't think there's anything wrong with it at the minute. We can always... It's not as though it's uh, the hardest job in the world to do, so... Yep. If I need to do it, I can do it, can't So the rationale is this. It's got the original OEM Hyundai water pump on. It's not got any problems. And if we need to replace it, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. No, that's about it, son. That's the answer. I'm not going to start chucking money at it for no any reason. I'm just going to feel like it. Here comes the water pump. Oh, baby. A bit wet. Yeah. Show us your water pump. No, oh, that's, you know, that's lovely in there. Don't piss about my water pump. Hey, look at my water pump. I am looking at your water pump. That's look. beautiful in there. Good. Are you looking at my water pump? That's why we're not replacing the water pump. Because <laughs> I'm a tight old get. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my cars. What that was that? So Hang on. That. Sorry, you've taken something off and I've missed it. What's that Tough. you've taken off? Oh, that's your speed position sensor thing. <laughs> yeah, so we've had some people on the internet tell us that the Napa timing chain kit we've bought is no good. Bums. And we should have bought Blueprint, and that the Napa kit will only last one or two years. So the good news is... I'm going to sell the bugger after a year then. Coming next year, we replace the timing chain on a uh, Hyundai i10. More content. It all depends how many miles you do in a year. Or yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Might not fix the bugger, that's the problem. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so we've got those bits and pieces off, water pumps off. What's next for the evening? I'm going to have my tea. Yep, that's it. End of day I'm one. I'm going to have a look at this chain. You're looking at my chain? 
It's your mum's chain. What are you doing with this chain? I'm going to put it in soak in a minute. Soaking in what? Engine oil. Ah, what, just to get it all lubricated and... Oh, that looks good. Yes. Can you wear that round your neck, please, like a wrapper? No, I'm not being there, it. <laughs> we don't do bloody stupidity in garages. This is a Hyundai garage, not a blinking... Proton garage. Proton garage. One there, look. On that link. And on that link. Perfect. So, hang on a minute. What, are, what is it you're marking up there? Ah, I'm looking at these. These marked links. One yeah. there and one yeah. there. And they go in line with the others. Well, no, there's some marks on the pull, isn't there? Yes. So, I don't understand, really. That chain, to me, looks like it's all the same. So why would you have marked links? Timing it up, son. There, there. Ah. On the bottom pull, there's a mark there, look. Now I understand. But you can't... The only time, they'll, they'll never light... You put them on, and then when you've turned the engine over, they're not there anymore. Yep. It only happens every so many thousand revolutions that it'll turn back in the right place again. So there's your engine chain. It's in a pot. What's this, having mushroom or chicken? Mushrooms, I think. And there goes the oil. Oh, beautiful. There we go. Look at that. So that's in there to soak overnight now. And what is the purpose of soaking that? Well, I've put it on. It'll be inside all the links and what have you. It'll be pre-lubricated. So it ain't got to wait for turning around in the engine to... Good stuff. It's done, isn't it? Gorgeous. So we've been working on this now for... Uh, 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 an hour and a half. Yeah. And It's how... ready for the cover to come off. It's re and it's re so it's ready for the time. Taking the bolts out for the cover, yeah. Cover to come off. It's your tea time. It's it my is. tea time. We're going to do some more tomorrow. Um, get the bugger finished tomorrow. Happy with what we've done tonight? Going to get the bugger finished tomorrow, Gromit. But happy with the progress we've done so far? Yes, mate. Yeah. Good stuff. I don't see why that Indian fella had took the compressor off. We're dropping the engine a little bit, just letting it sit down. Allowing some more water to drain out of it overnight. Right, you go get your tea, I'll go get my tea, and I, I will see you tomorrow. I shall put the blinking tools away first, son. Hey? I shall put the blinking tools away first. Uh, right, before we end day one, what's for tea? You know, I don't blinking well know. Well. But I am concerned that somebody says that Napa stuff's no good. Yeah, someone on the TikToks so has bit... uh, criticised Napa. No, he didn't criticise, he just said that he's blinking well had trouble with it. Well, no, he's criticised Napa. Yeah. Uh, he's been in the trade, what, 30 odd years and has had lots of problems with it. Yes. You've been in the trade, what, 52 years? Yeah, but I'm well, What's your professional opinion? Oh, I've never fitted it. Oh, a Napa, Napa springs on your uh, smart car. No, they were APEC. Oh. I've got loads of Napa boxes at one stage. Them was the springs that failed in about three seconds, were they? Uh oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. Bombs. <laughs> right, good night. Right, I'll put an APEC one on next then. At least we've had a practice. <laughs> content! Yeah, more content, you bugger. Right, see you tomorrow. See you, mate. Ah, the inspector is here. Hello, girl. The engine mounting inspector. Aha, good morning. Hello, mate. <laughs> Day two, then, of working on the Hyundai i10 and putting the timing uh, chain on it. You've been busy this morning. Uh, you said you weren't going to do anything, but you have. You've drained the oil. Yes, mate. And you've also what, jet washed all the parts that we took off yesterday. Yes. Apart from the alternator, obviously. Um, I, I want to address there. something. Fire away. So I put a video on uh, TikTok yesterday uh, of the Napa timing chain kit that we bought. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's had some very, very bad feedback. That's a concern. Not not the not the fact that our video was naff, but the fact that we're putting in. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, yeah, a lot of people genuinely. So that our video was really naff. <laughs> commented how bad the Napa timing chains are. Yeah. Uh, which has worried me, but you're you know glass half full sort of person. Um, we can't do it about them, can we? <laughs> we can't. No. Um, so we're going to fit it, and if it's no good, we'll fit a genuine one, won't we? Um, but at the moment, we are still forging ahead with our Napa timing chain, here it is. Uh, let us know in the comments below, any concerns with Napa? Um, just, I want, I want, anybody that's got some good reports, tell yeah, me the good tell ones. Tell us about the good yeah, stuff. I just don't want to hear the bad stuff. There's a gasket um, from the head, uh, well, the rocker cover. Um, how's that looking, come off all right? 
Well, we ain't got another one, so it's going to have to go back. Isn't there it? you go. Uh, best uh, practice. Of course it is. Put a new one on. Of course it is. Of course right, it what's is. What's the plan then? So we. I tell you what we're going to do, son. I've yep. got the oil drained. Yeah. And it did cross my mind. Shall I whip the sump off to have a look at the strainer? Yes. Then I thought that'd be a silly thing to do, wouldn't ah. it? See if we can see the blinking thing. Oh, I'm not, but I'm not going to play silly idea. beggars too much. I want to get this done today. So. You've got the little inspection camera. I'm assuming you're going to stick it in the sump hole and see yeah. if you can see the strainer. Uh, have you got any concerns about I don't know. the oil strainer? I, I, what I've been really hoping is overnight somebody that... Somebody that is very familiar with these, yeah. e.g. somebody that's been working on them for the last 15 years, yeah. will come and say, tell us what you need to look out for is, yeah, I've heard that before, no, this sort of thing. Not had all that. But I'll tell you one thing we do need to say. What? We need to give a big shout out to Leon, who has sent us on PDF format uh, oh, yeah. overnight, <laughs> the, uh, from the proper manual, how to do this job. Got, well, I printed the instructions off his yes. centres. So but the, the, the bits with, that... With the torque rate settings, and it's confirmed that how we're fiddling about, we're going on the right track. But the so. bits that Leon sent us are useful, right? It certainly are. So thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Right, so inspection camera is coming out. <laughs> yeah. We're going to stick it in the sump, see what we can see. Right, so we're in the sump now. We can have a look well, inside. I'll be honest with you, we can't see. Oh! Yeah, that'll be the bearing ladder and what have you. No, that's not helping us, is it? Well, that was quite fruitless, actually. A waste, of, a waste of five minutes, that was. Couldn't really see anything, but you're not concerned. Yeah, really good being concerned, isn't right. it? Right, good. Let's this cover off. So what's the next part? Take the uh, chain cover off, yeah? Yeah. I see the alternator is on the floor down there. Well, it sort of fell off during the night. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some blinking awkward bolts around there. So the alternator is now yeah. off. Well... That there, it's because the workshop manual, what I've seen, isn't very clear. But so we're going to take this back of the water off. pump. There's the thermostat housing. You see that there? That's the thermostat housing, and it's it, I think it's on an O ring there, and it's on an O ring, some O rings here. Yeah. So we may have to source some O rings from our O ring stock. Why do we need to take that off? Because it's fastened to the cover. Look. Oh, I see. And that's why I took the alternator off because there's nut there. Behind the alternator. Well, for the sake of and there's what, a bolt round there. Four bolts and getting the alternator out. It wasn't a big job, was it? Uh, the alternator was off, really. It was just fastened by the wires, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we're going to support the engine. Yep. So it's time to take the engine mount off. Uh, we've got to jack the end up, engine up and support it while we take that off. You've got some board and some kingspan foam there. I'm yeah, guessing that's I just to protect yeah. the sump, is it? Looks a bit tilly, really, that sump does. So we'll yes. have some protection on it. Best uh, best practice is not jack anything up by the sump. It's not so much that, it's just that uh, if you crease it up, it pushes the sump against the strainer. But that should be... We're not taking all the weight of the engine. We're just no, just supporting the... it. As you can see, not much weight on there. So the engine mount is now off. Obviously there's more engine mounts on the car, but that is the one that supports this end of the engine. Jet wash, jet wash your engine mounting while you've got it off. It can be and as you can see, Dad's uh, cleaned all these parts this morning as well. Elbow grease, degreaser, and a jet wash. They're drying whilst we're uh, messing about. Ah, the inspector is here. Hello, girl. The engine mounting inspector. Good morning. You're all right, ain't you, mate? Keeping an eye on things. Yeah, you look after the stuff, won't you? Make sure nobody nicks our bits. So, mighty boy. Well, now the workshop inspector is here, making sure everything's okay. What can you see? <laughs> oh. What do you oh. think? <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> There's a knobhead with a camera, grandad. <laughs> Don't fit a napper chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you, Napper. <laughs> that bugger is tight. Should he have loosened that before he took the engine mount off? Yeah. Sure nobody wants to see me taking a flipping bolt out. That tinker is tight. So at the moment we're removing these big bolts, Ooh. which uh, fit into the cover and into the block. 
There's about six of them. Once they're out, the cover should come off. Took them awkward buggers out from the back. In theory, the cover should be free, but before we start smacking it and pulling it, mm. we're gonna just make sure we've got all them bolts out. Yes. Right. That's come loose, that is. Na, 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 na. Love tap. There it is. Don't move the light then. Don't bugger off with the light. There it is. And it comes. We actually had a, quite a lot more bonding on there than we expected. Yeah, no, it and, the, and the thermostat housing was causing us grief. But it's off. What do you reckon? Let's have a look. Right, so that's the oil pump. So now we can see the timing chain. It's in those guides there. Yeah. And you've noticed something about the oil pump sprocket. Yeah, just tell just, us about that. Well, the oil pump lives in that front cover, look. Let's have a look. And it's driven by them two notches there, look. Right. So you've got to line them up and there put and it there. together. Can you see it's got them bloody yep. marks? I can. To tell you where to put the bugger when you put it together, look. There, look. So there must be another O-ring there. So you've just taken an O-ring out of the end of the engine with your pick. Yeah. Um, hopefully we've got some O-rings in stock. If not, uh, if not, we're going to have to reuse them. Um, let's see if there's any more. Should be another one, sort of. Yeah, it's in that thermostat here. No, we'll leave that for now. It's safe. So just talk us through what we can see. I'll we've got the variable I'm valve there. timing pieces here that we could see, yeah. and the top of the chain. We've got some guides in here, and then the, and then the chain itself. Yeah. See, the instructions say, when you take that... Oh, that tension is a long way out. I'm going to see if I can get my camera in the engine. i just shine that in there. So now we can see inside there. Just talk me through what the tensioner is, what it does, because I'm an idiot. It's got a spring in it, but it's also got oil pressure on it. Yeah. And, and what does that do? It puts tension on the chain. Puts tension on that that thing there. Let's have a look. Which bit you talking about? That plastic thing there. Yes. The, the instructions say you squeeze that with your pliers, and that will go back in. So you say it's a long way out. You mean the actual pin? Yeah, it looks is, to be a long way out. It's so a long way yeah, out. It does. Which could. But the instructions say you put your little pin in to retain it. And this hasn't got one, and the new one hasn't got one. I wondered if they've been, the instructions are uh, wrong. Well, it's not so wrong, but things have changed. Yes. So the that tensioner being out quite far, yeah, indicative that it's stretched. If we don't, if we if it ain't stretched, we're wasting a bugger in time, aren't we? And how will we know if it's stretched? I suppose I could measure it, but I'm not going to fanny about. I'm just going to put a new one on in a minute. So it's time to take the chain off. Yeah, I'll just take this back guide off first. It's best practice, I'm assuming, to uh, replace those guides at the same time. Yeah, you'd be a mug not to do. What we're doing is actually the bare minimum. But let's face it, if them things are making a noise, we're screwed, aren't we? Why would they make a noise? Because they're all faulty inside. So there's not a lot of wear on that. Not a lot of wear on that, son. Aha! Uh -huh. The chain is off. Yeah. If you're putting it back, you'd have marked it because you can't see the marked links very well now. There's one there, look. No, you can see them just. They're sort of a gold colour, aren't they? Yeah, you can, can just see the marked links, look, still. Can you see? Yep. Different, one there and one there. Is but we're it? not putting the chain back. No, unless this is worse. <laughs> mm. And we put the bug back on again. Well, if it is worse, we go down to our local Hyundai garage and buy a genuine chain for 20 quid. We? Yeah, we. Because you'll need a lift there. 
Touch wood, I have a Piogut. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. We should have got an apprentice. I'd leave him to do that. <laughs> Does that take all the old ceiling off? Yeah. <laughs> no, no apprentices here. Only production crew. I've decided that Hyundai i10s are not very good for content. Then there was that. Because you can't really see much. Second guide's off, how's that looking? Can't see any wear on it, my old mate. Let's compare the old chain to the new chain, see if we can see any great difference. Not a friggin' skerrick. In fact, I reckon the new chain's longer than the old one. Yeah, don't, can't see a difference, can you? Let's have a look. I can't see a difference. Uh, you're right, the new chain is longer. So there you go. Great times. Genuine question. Yes, John. If we do all this and it makes it worse or doesn't fix it, what's the plan? I don't know. Are we living with it? Keep at it until we find it, don't we? Just tell us what you're doing now. I'm cleaning all that sealant off this face, mate. Uh, what are you using? Uh, plastic pan. scraper. Yep. Sometimes for an awkward bit, I've got a metal scraper to go in the holes yep. and some fine scotch bright. And it's really important to do that to get a good seal yeah, back on oh it yeah. when you put it back on, eh? Indeed, mate, indeed. Bit of a thankless task, that. Yeah, it's a ball ache, to be fair. A ball ache of the highest order, but it's got to be done. You need an apprentice. You do. That's just what I need. So that's nice and clean. Time to do the same, but with this bit. At least you can get at this tinker. If this doesn't fix the problem, what are we going to do? We? <laughs> we? Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to do something else. It saddened me a little bit that yeah. a car of such an era, so a relatively modern car, yeah. we are putting aftermarket parts A nine-year-old car. Yeah, but you see, you've got the original tensioner there, original Kia Hyundai yeah. tensioner, original guides, original chain, Oh, hey. And we're not putting. Well, you've got to remember, my employer don't pay me very frigging well, so I, I can't afford to spend out on the. I thought you was retired. I thought you was living off the uh, the sweet, sweet pension part. Oh no! <laughs> Seeing as this latest government decides to call the stuff I've been paying into since I was sixteen year old. Oh no, that's a benefit. I think it's a benefit when you've not been paying into it for 16 years, for, for 50 years. And then you get it. And, and then well, you still get it. Remember, no politics on the channel. Um, I think I would prefer us to be doing a K-series engine this morning. Than Too this. bloody right, son. But we ain't got one done because we've we did, we fixed it for, in the end. Well, we need another one. That's what, we, that's what I'm hearing. I think you want to go and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what we need, an MGTF. Tell you what you want to do. If you get one of them, John, <laughs> you'll be a silly man because they're horrible to work on. Never again. Never again. Right, so once that's all scratched off, we're going to, I'm guessing, clean it all out, degrease it, jet wash it, and um, have a cup of tea, I think. Yeah, too bloody right, son. Jet wash! Well, cup of tea time over, and it's time to crack on with the project. What are you doing now? Putting that front guide on. Oh, right, okay. So, what well, the new one, obviously, from the kit. Um, have you secured that down with anything, or is it just bolted into place? I didn't say you was locked tight. So, you've bolted that into place there. Guide number one is in. So, now, the important time, which is put the chain in place. Not on there. No, that's on there. That's a mark there, mark there. It's so the chain is loosely hung on. Can you just explain to us the fitting coloured process? Coloured links to the marks, mate. So let's have a look. So on here is a coloured link. A coloured link is sort of a, a goldy colour. And you can see here is the markings on the top here 
here and you've aligned them up. Yep. Yeah. Why is it important to do that? You've got to get your valves working in the same right, right place towards the pistons. Okay, so make sure you've uh, lined it up correctly. Time to fit the next guide. 11, so that's 10, isn't it? Just show me what you've got there. What's, what's that, a, a torque chart? It's just a picture of the torque wrench settings. So there. torque wrench settings for those guides. So that bolt there through that guide. What is he doing there? Putting, I'm just priming the tensioner. Okay. With it works with oil more. pressure. Well, it's got a spring in it, but apart from that, when the engine's running, it pumps oil in there to put pressure on it. Okay, so it's good <laughs> practice to... That's why you don't wind the engine it. backwards, because there's no oil pressure on it. On goes the tensioner. Does the tensioner automatically set itself, or do you have to push it back and, and set it? It's, it's, well, it's got a clip on it that holds it back, and when I've got it all sorted out... You didn't answer me question. What's that? Do you set it to a specific... No, it sorts itself out. Thank you. We've checked everything, we've tightened everything up, you've made sure I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, everything has been talked up. Yeah. What's next? Take this clip off. Okay, show me the clip. What's the clip on? Is it on the, uh, the tensioner? Yep. Yep. Out it comes. Don't leave the clip on then. I don't think you would do with a cover. Hey, we've just been offered a free project. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, which is a 1989 Lotus Esprit. Cool. Uh, I'm guessing we're not taking on that project. <laughs> Somebody a lot younger than me needs to do that. You don't fancy a Lotus Esprit? I don't fancy any projects, thank you. So this is the old yeah, I'm just going to... um, tensioner. You're going to try and wind it back, are you? Um... Oh, squelchy. There it is. So you've pushed it back using the clip and the vice. It doesn't look very worn, does it? No, I think we're wasting our time. we put the new O-rings in. O-ring time. Durco. So that is... High temperature silicon sealant. The silicon sealant. Are you going to put that on the O-rings, or around the O-rings? I'm going to put a slightest little bit, just to stick them in. Is that good practice, bad practice? I don't know. Um, Alan Milliard does it. Oh, well. If it's good enough for Alan Milliard, it's good enough for Peter Cowopland. This is not normal. Normally, I'd be. It looks like the O-ring is a special O-ring with some locating tags. We're having to reuse the old O-rings. Um, no new O-rings in our kit, and as Dad said, they're a funny size. They're sort of they're quite slender in comparison to the ones we've got. Yeah, they look like a special thing. But they're not broken. They're not worn. Mm. Not best practice. Just but... don't put too much jolly on though. Just a little tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit. The special O-rings look. Oh yeah, they've, they've got, got a little, little, tag, little tag on. The special things. Someone has actually used one of these timing chains and not had a problem. I did look on some forums and some Americans with a Nissan says that they're not our interest with them. With their big trucks. Well, if it's no good, it's no good. It's not the end of the world. The worst thing is, that, you know, it just doesn't stop the noise and we've, we've done the wrong thing. Thermostat housing is going back on. Let's get the uh, cover, see what we're dealing with here. Show us your cover then. Oh, that looks good. Well does, mate. This is the cover now, so you're going to put some Durco on there, are you? Well, I'm going to put a little bit on there, only a very little amount. I'm going to put loads around there. It says you've got to put a bit on the head. So we've just double checked everything, made sure it's all okay, made sure it's all talked up correctly, uh, make sure the O-rings are in properly before we put the cover back on. Not using no nonsense bathroom sealant. You've been down to screw fix and got some bathroom sealant. <laughs> I'm assuming you can use too much of that stuff. You jolly well can, Robert. It needs to be like a continuous bead though. Yeah. And it gets all in your engine bits. And your mum here, she's good at icing cakes. Can 
can see how it's got like a channel that stops that getting in them important places. I can. Right, so it's time to put the cover back on. Um, any particular way of doing this? You've got to line the oil pump drive up. There's some marks on the cover though. All the damage the crank seal putting it on. Lots of the old jollop there. That's that there. Guiding that on there. There's nothing trapped there. What's stopping me going on at the back? No, it's just too far forward. The love tap worked then. It's popped it back on. <laughs> Sat on the dowels. The Durco just needs cleaning off. <laughs> where we've got it on the uh, Ralphie Customs says bits love and pieces taps. on there. Are you um, on a secondment to Ralphie Customs, or are you getting well, getting paid by of, Ralphie Customs? He's the sort of chap I sort I of see. I I've worked with in the past. <laughs> you shouldn't be plugging other people's channels. You see this here? What's that? This is a star, star, star bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put these star, star, star bolts in. I've worked with many men like Ralphie Customs chap. Good hearted fella will do out for you. In go the bolts. I don't know whether he likes pork pie or not, but he lives near Melton Mowbray. I'll tell you one thing, well, if he doesn't like pork pie, I <laughs> certainly do. Put a food. I bloody love a pork pie right now. <laughs> Must be about seven months since I've had a pork pie. I don't think my diet allows for pork pies now. No. Although, I did have a kebab and cheesy chips this week. Well, I think a pork pie would have been better than that crap. It, um... It was the necessary of two evils. More bolts going back in, making sure we've not missed any. <laughs> and they can be tightened up. It's pretty much now the reverse of taking it off. We've done the important bit. In go all the bolts on the cover. There's blooming loads of them, so make sure you've got them all in. If you need to reference the case torque settings, here they are. Pause the video now. Right, so the cover is back on. It is, car. yes. Yes. What was the worst part about that? Just getting all the bolts in, really. Yeah. Um, once it was on, it was on. As you say, it was on. Now it's time to put the water pump back on. Hang on a minute, you're putting Durco on there. Is that yeah. is that is that the right thing to do? No. Good. Don't ever do this. Bad practice. Bad man. Don't do this. You are desperate for a Hyundai slash Kia expert I am. to interrupt their bank holiday Monday and say, I know what that bugger is, mate. Tell you what that is. What's I've heard, wrong? I've heard dozens of the buggers. I've heard dozens of them. It's nothing to do with what you've done. anything you've touched. It's a little switch over here. I it did cross my mind it might be the solenoids. Rattle right. somewhere. It did cross my mind it might be the solenoids. We've received some criticism on TikTok, so I'm not oh, that bothered. I'm sorry about that. Uh, to suggest that we should have had the problem properly diagnosed. Yeah. Uh, as you say, oh. we took it to Hyundai, and they went, no idea, mate. We said, it never heard one like it. Then I looked on some forums, and they says there is a problem with the timing chain on some models, and they say it's not a problem as such, it's just that they make a flipping noise. But it's very, very vague. Next to go back on is the crank pulley. Just get the little round key peg thing. This little key way look. Yep, so you can't get it on the wrong way. No, because it's your timing marks would not be right with the... You've put some Vaseline on there. I have, mate, yeah. Is that just to help it slide on? Yeah. What are you showing me? Your timing marks on TDC. There's a T mark on the case and a, a mark on the pulley. Right, let's have a look. Oh, yeah. That looks good to me, Gromit.
So there is the timing mark, and there is the T. What does the 10 next to it denote? 10 degrees before top 10 center. Oh. I'm guessing it's to check the timing. So it's in the right place anyway. So while I was on the floor having a look at that, you were trying to tell me something. What were you telling me? Yeah, we're going to put the oil, put the oil filter on, put some oil in it. So while I'm peddling about turning the engine over, it'll be starting to prime itself. Ah, good idea. So while I'm peddling about, I'll be doing something useful. So oil filter primed. I don't know, mate. Right, there we go. In goes the oil filter. Oil going in, three litres to start with. We can't do it properly because the car's jacked up and on the wonk. Um, you've got a top tip because you've made a bit of a mess. Yeah, don't leave the uh, TDC sensor out when you're trying to fill it up down the bottom in the cam carrier. Yeah, she'll end up with oil all on the floor. Don't do that. Top tip. Time to turn the engine over. So now you're going to turn the engine over. Just tell us why you're going to do that. Make sure there's no broken. And so it works. Turn it over twice. Yep, because it's a, the cam runs at half speed. So it will, after two turns, it'll be back where I started from, won't it? Does that make any sense? It does. So it should be coming up soon. Can I just get this dirt off here? Yeah, you shouldn't put your fingers in there, buddy. You shouldn't put your fingers in there. That's the last place you want to put your fingers. Even if it is only being turned over. That's about right. There you go. Now I'm going to get this deck off. You're good man. Oh, it's all stuck and all sorts. I shouldn't worry too much. It's not going to cause a problem then. So you've turned the engine over twice. <laughs> Nothing seems broken and it's lined up. So you've written the torque setting down. Yes. For the crank pull. Is it crank pulley? Yes, son. Um, what is it? Well, I've given a big range of 55.9 newton metres to 61.8 newton metres. And what percentage? Plus 38 degrees to 42 degrees. Oh, so 40 degrees, eh? Yeah. Yeah, bugger! I mean, that's a different kettle of fish there, Gromit. In go the spark plugs. Torque setting, 14.7 to 24.5. We're gonna do it to 20 Newton meters. Let's double check. Right, so what's the plan next? What's the next so protocol? Spin her up and make sure the oil's coming up. Okay, how do we do that? Is, are we doing that by turning the key? Yes, mate. Oh, right, okay, not, not, we're not so gonna do it manually. The alternator's still off, there's no water in it, it's got some oil in it. So I want to see the oil coming up out them cam bearings. Okay. Shall I connect the uh, negative? Yeah, just hang it on. Hang the negative on. It's safe. It won't spark because it's got no cam sensor. There she goes. Right, here we go. Spin her over. Yeah, you're looking for oil coming out of them sort of places. Okay. Onto the cams. Yeah, sort of. Just coming out of the bearings. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. You need your light. I do need my light. Here we go. I said I'd do it for long anyway. If it doesn't come up soon, I'll just forget about that. No, yeah, did it come up? Looks like it. That'll do. So what was the purpose of us doing that? What was the purpose of that? To see if the oil was coming up some. We've had the oil pump off, haven't we? Yep, and it is, which is good news. Yeah. Rightio, let's put that rocker cover on. On goes the rocker cover. We've put some Durco on there as well, on the gasket. Bad practice, don't do it. Do the bloody job properly, not like what we're doing. Bunch of bloody amateurs. Talking of amateurs, Mike Terry looking down on us. It'll soon be bolts. lunchtime. Bolts, 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 bolts. Uh, Mike Terry, excellence. School of excellent entertaining. We're now pretty much reversing what we've been doing. The uh, coils are back in place. All this pipe work is now clipped back in. This clips all back in. Tops down. It's time to put the alternator back in, which uh, could prove a little bit tricky. Actually, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. 
alternators in. Now it's time to put the water pump poly cover on. On goes the belt. Remember, we put it on the wing mirror facing the way that it goes back on. That was a Pete Coupland top tip. I am filling the radiator back up with cool. Engine mounting has gone back on. Uh, we have taken the jack out from underneath the engine as well. Putting these wires back on and effectively it'll be ready to spin up. We're in a position then to start it up. I've hung the battery lead on, taken that glove off there so we can get some compression. Go on then. Well, I was expecting that rattle. What was the rattle? Timing chain tension of filling up with oil. Just filling itself up. I hate to say it, but I can't hear the shushing. It's gone. I can hear that whine now. It's solved the problem. Ah, but might it only last until after tea? Yes. So, that's, yeah. The shushing noise is gone. The shushing noise is gone. There is a little bit of a whine. You can tell where the shushing noise was. It's still there, but not like it was. You can hear a... That's the shushing noise. And that's the noise, but it's gone. Well, it's not like it was, is it? But why does it do it? Definitely not loud like it was. No, it's definitely solved the problem. I like you say, but it's how long there. for? Sounds to me like it's a bit of a uh, feature. But it's certainly not, well, we'll know when your mother is it, won't we? Yes, let's face it. That chain that we took Have off- you got a video of the noise? Did 70,000 miles. Yeah. That chain okay. is brand spanking new. It was the original one though, wasn't it? So, it, it must be better. It has to be better. The shushing noise. It's gone, it's fixed it, hasn't it? Well, should we tell your mum it's not fixed it and just leave it outside? <laughs> <laughs> That's 80 pounds, please. Tell your mum we've not fixed it. We've not fixed it. You let, you let her live with it. But we've got some content. A shadow of the noise. Yeah, but there's still a noise. Yeah, you can hear there's, there's that's, Noise is sort of there, but not like it was. Do you think that it's a noise that is always there? Well, that's what the forums say. Monday yeah. item. Some cars are worse than others. Probably because they need a new timing belt, timing chain. No, they're a bit like it, so it says. I'm not going to worry, but it's definitely not like it was. No. Sure. Is it? As you say, how long for? We shall soon find out. Oh well. Now put the airbox back. The Napa in. haters say it'll last 20 miles. Sorry? The Napa haters says it last 20 miles on yes. the internet last night. Airbox has gone back on. We need to do a little bit of a repair to part of it. Excuse me, what are you uh, bodging that with tiger well, seal for? Because it was bodged when I got the bloody job. Uh, yeah, it's got a small crack. It was stuck in with our TV. In, the, um, in the piece. Yeah. I wonder how much one of those actually is oh, yeah. to replace. You can see the crack. And I can see the crack when you bent over. Oh, thank you. It's in here. I am disappointed that we managed to do this whole project without using the hydraulic press. I would have thought there'd have been a need for that. Pretty much back together under the engine. We need to uh, top the oil up. And the coolant will need settling cool down. So we'll get it on the deck, get the under trays back on. I think it's time for some lunch first and foremost. You've been sitting there masticating while I've been walking. I beg your pardon? You've masticating? Oh yeah, I had some uh, lovely Thai chilli rice snacks. Sitting there really crunching while I was walking. Yeah, but you're going to have something nice that I can't eat. It's weigh-in day for me today. Oh, is it? Yeah, I've had a naughty week. <laughs> yeah. So here is the noise afterwards. Let's get me microphone in there. It's certainly fixed the problem. Hey, guess what? What? We're not wasting our time then. 
I wish we'd diagnosed it properly in the first place. <laughs> uh, we took it to Hyundai. The master technician said, never seen anything like that before. No, he just mate. said, I, I, I've got no and idea. And to be fair to the chap, I think he was a recent acquisition as a master tech. Fair enough. But the rent, but not it the wasn't like some old git who's been doing Renaults for 15 years. The the Hyundai Master Tech had no idea. It could have been the VVC items. It could have been the VVC solenoid. It could have been well, no, we diagnosed the belt, but we found out the problem was the timing change. I've been living with a bugger for two years. And it's finally got on my nerves. Uh, things that we got to worry about. Napa timing chain. Yeah. Lots of people saying they like cheese. Lots of people saying we'll be doing. Well, I love cheese, yeah, brother. Me too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lots of people saying that uh, we're going to be doing the project again in a couple of years. If we are, well, the least, video uh, is coming to the channel in two years. At least I know what I'm doing then. At least we know what we're doing, and we know if we get that shushing noise again. As soon as it happens, I shall remember, shan't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to put in the video, you filling the oil up and us filling the coolant up and doing all that sort of stuff. No. I'm going to say that that is... A fish. A fix. That is job done. Are you happy with the work that we've done? I have no concerns whatsoever. It's taken us four hours, really, um, considering we started yesterday. Had a bit of lunch, had a bit of cup of tea in the process. We've had the production crew here. We've had a fuss with Crystal, the inspector. By the time we've put all the tools away, topped the oil up, put it on the deck, put the under tray on, and got it all back out and mum done a test drive, it's gonna be another hour, so a five hour job. Um, if you was in the garage trade still, you didn't have a production crew in your way, and you were doing that for a customer, no, How, I, bet, I bet the bosses would be expecting you to date in two and a half hours. I, I was going to say, I was going to say three. Yeah. So you'd be saying that's a that's a two and a half hour job. I reckon the bosses would be wanting that in two and a half hours. Do you think you could do it in two and a half hours? Yeah, but you wouldn't piss about talking everything up, would you? <laughs> <laughs> you'd just go air ratchet. There you go. Um, so you're happy. Blooming over the moon, Gromit. Excellent news. It shut it up anyway, isn't it? It has shut it up, yeah. There's still a bit to do, as we've said. But from us, doing a timing chain replacement on the Hyundai, it's solved the shushing noise, and for now, it's fixed the problem. If you've enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed the process, thumbs up, please, if you haven't already done so. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. What do you reckon? Napa timing chain, we're going to be doing it next week, or have you never had any problems? Did you think that that was going to solve the problem, or did you think it was something else? And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Till next time, have a great day. Double thumbs up from Dad. Uh, you're happy? I'm bubbling over, mate. I enjoyed that. That was a good, uh, good couple of days this Bank Holiday Monday. Till next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bubbling over. I genuinely hope you've enjoyed this video. I've selected a couple more from my channel for you that I think that you might like here. Give them a click and it will take you to the next video. Don't forget to hit subscribe to always stay up to date with what we're getting up to.